guys, this is Kazi. Welcome back to another epic video. And today I'm going to be covering a topic that a lot of you have asked for in the past, how to grade underwater footage, but I'm taking it a step further. So I'm going to be showing you how to not only grade underwater footage, but how to get perfect skin tones, since that is one of the hardest things to do, especially in this situation. When the ground is really low and the person is in the middle, like say in open waters or something like that, the color cast is not as bad as this, because think about this. You have light coming through the top, right? Hitting the floor and then bouncing back. And since the floor is teal, you're picking up all that cast. Okay. And that's why usually when you see underwater footage, it looks like this. If it's Rec 709 or badly graded, it's really hard to pull the colors out. All right. Separating everything. And I'm going to do it in the easiest way possible to stick to the name of the title. That said, if any of you still find this difficult, then we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8 bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive QA, and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. So do not forget to check out the training. Link is going to be up top and in the description below. And please do me a favor, smash that like button so we can reach more people. That's how the YouTube algorithms work. If we want this video to reach more people and we can help more people, that's the way to do it. So smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. About 60% of you are not subscribed, but keep coming back for new content. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified when we put out new content. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. I upload a lot of behind the scenes stuff and do tons of Q&A and live sessions there. So make sure you're following me there. That said, let's roll the intro. All right, so let's jump right in. First thing as a colorist you need to know is what is a shot on? So know your camera information, okay? This is shot on Red Gemini. This is very important, especially if I want to apply a Rec. 709 LUT or take the CST route. So that out of the way, let's analyze our scopes really quick. This will help us understand what's really going on with our shot. So we see that there's tons of cyan, okay? And that's being created by this. Like, look at our greens, our blues, and then reds are sitting all the way down here. So reds are down here. That's what's creating that cyan, and the whole thing just feels like murky, teal thing, right? And we can even see our vector scopes that everything is sitting down here and then over here in that cyan world. Okay, so this is going to be a simple six nodes node tree. That's not complicated at all, especially for where we're starting to where we're ending up. Okay, and I'm going to lay this in a staircase order because it's going to really help you understand what's happening here. Okay, and uh, we're going to do this and then we're going to do that. So we basically have five steps. We're going to start off with our grain. OK, why am I using my grain up top? It's as if it was shot on film. When something is shot on film on a negative, the grain is already embedded when it comes to resolve. Right. So you will grade after the grain is already embedded on the negative. OK, so this is why the grain goes over here. Then we're going to do our primaries here. I'm going to call the sauce. These two nodes, I'm just going to have fun with the naming convention. This one I'm going to call character. OK. And uh, here is going to be our curves. And it, this is not going to be just our custom curves. It will also be HSL curves. Everything is going to be clumped together in this spot. And then this is going to be our CST. What is CST? Color space transform. If you don't know what that is, then I highly encourage you to go watch the free training. I don't only explain to you what this is. I'll also tell you why I have my node tree the way it is here. So you will get a lot of the why and how in that training. OK, so we apply the CST. Nothing really happens. Why? Because we need to tell it what we want it to do. So this incoming stuff is all from red. So I'm going to go select the right parameters. Red, white, gamut, RGB as my color space and red log 3G10 as my gamma input gamma. Now, this is going to be Rec 709 and outputting to gamma 2.4. So I'm going to select that here and boom, there you go. So people that say, 
Well, show us something from, you know, terrible cameras because not everybody has access to Red and Alexa and everything from Alexa and Red looks great. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you don't know what you're doing, this looks pretty terrible right out the gate unless you fix all those things. Like the water is looking all, you know, crummy. And then you got the skin tones that are completely off to where they're supposed to be. One thing that I want to tell you guys is that in your vector scope, you probably will have this looking like that, right? So the skin indicator will not be turned on by default. You have to click on this guy and then say, show skin indicator. And then as soon as you do that, you can see where your skin is supposed to be. Now, this is up for interpretation because if you're creating a certain look, whether it's a cool look or warm look, then your skin will sway a little bit to the left or the right, okay? But general rule of thumb is to keep your skin right in the center or around that area. Right now, we're way off, okay? So if I click on my qualifier, punch in, and just hover over here, look at my vector scope where the skin is sitting. It's way off. So that is our first indicator what we need to do. But before we get there, first thing that I like to do before I even balance my image is adding tons of contrast and getting my exposure where I want it to be, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing here. But one more step that I forgot to do, and uh, let's do it now, is under our CST, where it says gamut mapping method, click right here, and you see all this red that's just like bunched up down here, and it's almost clipped. When I go in here and click on saturation compression, boom, it just brings it all up, and it helps me out here, okay? So you wanna make sure that you turn that on. And now under custom curves, let's just have fun with it, okay? So I'm gonna create my own curve. Let's do something like this, something like that. And then here, I'm just gonna do this. So something like that, right? Like I don't wanna be too, I don't want to be too crunchy, all right? I want the image to pop, but I don't want to make it too crunchy. So this is not looking bad, although I do want to do something like this and then pull this down. Let's see. Okay. And then let me see here. Don't rush through this because this is going to be basically the look DNA, okay? So you wanna get this right. Now, one more thing that I wanna do right off the bat is this. I want to go under my luminance versus sat and uh, that's going to help out with a lot of like unnecessary color that we see in our highlights. So I'm going to take the brightest area and I'm going to pull it down a little bit. And you see like how my water gets cleaned up and looks all white. That's how it's supposed to be. Now, I don't want to overdo it because if you look at the tiles, I'm pulling a lot of color out of them. So I don't want to overdo it. Okay. I do want to go too far and then I want to kind of pull it back. So even splitting the difference and keeping it somewhere around here, I'm pretty happy with it. It makes it look very sophisticated, okay? So that's where I'm gonna leave it. Now we're gonna go into our primaries. We're gonna fix all these issues. I mean, just look at the overall image. It's so teal. Look at where the skin is sitting. It's ugly. Let's fix it. So I'm gonna start with my printer lights. What do I need to do? I need to cancel a lot of cyan. So I'm gonna start adding a lot of red. That usually does the trick. So I'm gonna obviously do it too much and then kind of pull it back, something like that. And then we're going to subtract some yellow. Okay, so as soon as we do that, we're really starting to look pretty good. Now I'm gonna add one cyan actually. And this is already looking pretty good. I'm gonna add one more red. And uh, that is, that might be just a touch too much. So I'm gonna go under my quarter print printer lights and let's add a little bit of green, pull it back, not too much. And even something like this. And uh, what else do we need right now? Maybe pull back on the red a little bit. Because guys, just remember, okay? We're picking up a lot of this color from the ground. The ground is teal, okay? 
sun is up top. So the light is hitting the ground. The ground tiles are reflecting onto our dude's skin. So you got to keep that in mind. So you don't want to overdo the skin tones because then it's going to look super unnatural. Okay. So I'm going to pull back on the red a little bit. I'm going to pull back on the blue a little bit. And even if I leave it somewhere around here, uh, look at the difference. Okay. Before, look at the skin tones, right? The skin tones. After, look at the skin tones. Way, way, way better. Look at the water, how clean the water is looking. Okay. I'm going to add one more cyan, and uh, I think that also helps. So I'm going to leave that there for now. Now we're going to go under our log wheels. Log wheels are your best friends when you're working with underwater footage because it gives you granular control. So you see like how his skin right here is picking up a lot of the color once again from the bottom. So here I can control that. I can go in my shadows and I can start adding some red. You see like how I'm pulling back some color in here. I don't want to overdo it, obviously, but I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to add a little bit more blue and I'm going to add a little bit more magenta. Again, don't want to overdo any of these steps, but just enough to the title of the video is to get perfect skin tones. So we still want to be true to that. OK, now I'm going to go under my midtone. And do the same thing. And midtone gives you a lot of flexibility here. Okay, so just look at how much power you have in your midtones. So I'm gonna cancel that, and now I'm gonna go back, and uh, I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here. I'm gonna take my teal and uh, pull it back a little bit, and then I'm gonna take my blue and uh, keep it somewhere around here. Okay, so. Look at the changes that we made here, okay? Before the log wheels modifications, we still had our skin leaning a little bit toward yellow, but look at it now. And it looks overall so much better and even. Like the water, everything is looking really proper, okay? At this point, what I want to do is I want to go back into my curves. I want to go under hue versus saturation. I want to take my yellow, I want to pull it down. Usually, there's a lot of gunk sitting in your yellows, okay? So I wanna pull it down, I wanna take my green and do the same thing, just to be on the safe side. I wanna pull these two down and it just makes my image crispier in this area. It just cleans up the shadows, okay? I'm gonna take my red also and I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. I don't wanna have too much saturation in my skin because now that we balanced our image properly, the contrast is creating that color pop. So we don't have to overdo it, right? Um, at this point, I can go under hue versus hue, take my blues and uh, just add a little bit more cyan, not too much, but I just don't like how much blue is in there. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit more cyan, right? I don't want to overdo it, but even something like this. And I just feel like it just makes it look a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to leave it like this and just look at how clean our image is looking. I mean, we can park it here and we can be very happy with the results. I can also take my cyan and start moving it around just to kind of see uh, what we can create. Honestly, I personally don't want to overdo that because I feel like the blue looks nice with the, with the contrast to the warm skin tones. So I'm going to leave that there. Now we're going to move on to the sauce. And yes, you guessed it right. I'm going to grab my glow and I'm going to drop it on here. So the first change we're going to make is under composite mode, we're going to change it to soft light. Obviously, it looks like garbage, which is totally fine. All you need to do is take your shine threshold, go all the way to the left. Now, all of a sudden, it looks perfect. Like I can just leave it here and it looks so good. Now, what I do want to do is I want to go under my saturation and kill it. OK, why am I doing that? You see around his arms how much this blue color that this glow is adding, which is not very desirable, especially when we're looking for that perfect skin tones in this tutorial. So I'm going to take my saturation. As soon as I kill it, look what happens here. Boom. All that color comes back. And quite frankly, it just looks much better than with saturation. So this is with saturation. This is without saturation. My water looks crispier. Everything looks much better. So I'm going to leave it like this. Now, another thing that you can do, let's say you're working on an extreme sports commercial then you can take your spread and pull it all the way to the left and make it look like this. Like, look how graphic this looks like. It looks like something from the movie 300, but on the cooler side, right? 
So that's a very cool look if you want to go for that. But in this case, I feel like I just want to go for the opposite. So I want to keep it somewhere around here. Okay. And this is looking pretty good. What I do want to try is take my gain in my glow and pull it down and then take the gamma in my gain and pull it up. Okay, so that really helps with the shadow areas to bring those out and then really help out with the uh, rest of the image to not blow out, right? So I'm going to take my gain and pull it down again, something like that. And if I do before and after, we're still making a massive difference, right? I'm going to take my gamma and lift it up a little bit. So it still looks really cool without just blowing the highlights too much. So this is looking very, very good. I'm going to go under my spread again and just kind of play with it a little bit because I feel like a little bit of contrast does not hurt, okay? So even something like that does not hurt. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. Now, the character is, uh, you can do multiple things here, but what I'm going to try is under my midtone detail, I'm going to take it and crank it to about 50-ish, okay? And just look what it does. Once again, if you're going for that hard look, just see the, all the texture that is adding to my image, like the bubbles just start to look 3D, like every line in the ground on the floor just pops, like all the details, like even like his traps, they just pop, right? Everything, you can even start to see his abs, like all of that. So I feel like this is a welcome addition to this grade. So I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to go under my grain. I'm going to just type in grain. And in this one, all you have to do is just drop it in and set it and forget it. It adds so much character to my image. It's unreal. Okay, so if I look at this, this just feels like it was shot on film. The color contrast that we were able to achieve, it just feels like this is embedded on the negative. And if I turn off the grain, it looks clean. And this could be your look. If that's what it is, go for it. There's nothing wrong with it. Personally, I feel like with what I'm going for and what I'm working with, it just looks way better with grain. I don't know what happened here. It looks way better with grain. So this is where I'm going to leave it, right? Because if I were to just show you the entire image where we are, we got tons of information here. Nothing is blowing out. Nothing is crushed, right? Um, it's totally up to you. You can go under your primaries. You can take the contrast and start playing with it. You can punch it a little bit more, right? So like even if we do something like this. I feel like even if we leave it somewhere around here, it doesn't look bad. It actually looks pretty good. So if I kill the contrast and then add it again, right? So add it and then kill it. So add the contrast. So with, with the additional contrast or without the additional contrast, that will ultimately come down to you. I personally think, I personally think without the contrast because I just get to see a little bit more information, okay? I can still see into his eyes and things like that. With the contrast, nothing wrong, but I think without the contrast, I actually don't, like, see, this is where it just becomes very subjective, okay? So I'm just having a dialogue with myself right now. Without, with, without, with. I feel like I do like the little bit more definition that we get the separation between the darker areas in his skin and then the lighter areas, right? So like if I do before and then after, before and after. So I will leave it in, totally up to you. You don't need to leave it in. But now if we go to our hero frame and I show you, here is our Rec 709. And then here is our graded version. Now when I'm looking at the difference between the graded and the Rec 709, I feel like the contrast is just too much. So I'm actually going to go back and uh, kill the contrast. So let's go here, kill the contrast. And I feel like that looks better. As a matter of fact, I personally feel like we can even pull the highlights back a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go back in my contrast. I'm going to take it here and I'm going to start pulling it down a little bit. So that's why, that's another pro tip, by the way, guys. Um, always have your Rec. 709 available because it's perfect for things like this where you can just go, okay, I went overboard, which is what we did. You know, our contrast was super pushed. And now 
when I go back and forth between my Rec. 7 or 9 and my grade, look at this, okay? So in terms of the exposure, we're pretty much on the in the same world, right? So in terms of the exposure, like look at his shoulder right here, here to here, we're pretty much there. It's the same. It's just all the color changes that we made to our image. So now let's kill all of this. Let's see where we started to where we ended up. So we started with our proper Rec. 709 conversion. This is what it looked like. Um, then we added our contrast to just work with the exposure. I went in to balance my image and this is where majority of the magic happens. So no qualifiers were required, no power windows, no ugly tracking or none of that. We don't have to deal with any of that. Added glow, which helped a ton. And then the sauce just added so much character to our and definition to our image. And then talking about character, grain just like put a perfect bow tie on top of our present. And now let's check out the final look in full screen. At this point, you're looking at it and going, dude, this wasn't the easiest way to get perfect skin tones. It was a 15 or 20 minute long tutorial. Then let me just say this. I was taking my time trying to explain that to you, right? Going through this. But once you understand everything from start to finish, you will be able to go from A to B in less than five minutes. I promise you, because we did not use any qualifiers, any power windows. We did not rely on any of those cheap tactics. We did it the right way where everything is embedded into our footage and it's a lot easier for it to transfer from shot to shot. OK, now I cannot stress enough the importance of building your node tree properly and it matters. The sequence of your nodes matter the most. And if you want to learn more about that, then you must check out the free training. Link is up top and in the description below. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. And remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed. I will see you guys in the next video.